Let's start with the Fed, though. What we heard, I heard more growth, less inflation, low unemployment. That sounds pretty good to me. Is it too good to be true? I don't know. Certainly, there's been some encouraging data flow during 2023, though the last two months haven't been quite so uh, encouraging. It's great and right to hope for the best, but hoping isn't planning. And certainly, from that scenario laid out in the dot plots, I think there's more room for things to surprise on the bad side than to surprise on uh, the better uh, side. We may have the path that's described there materialized. It's certainly got to be recognized as a very real possibility. My sense is still that the Fed is itchy fingers to start cutting rates. And I don't fully get it. We've got unemployment, if anything, below what they think is full capacity. We've got inflation, clearly even in their forecast for the next two years, above target. We've got GDP growth rising, if anything, faster than potential. We have financial conditions, the holistic measure of monetary policy, at a very loose level. I don't know why we're in such a hurry to be talking about moving to moving towards uh, the accelerator. So we heard from uh, Chair Powell that, in fact, he thinks these conditions are restrictive right now. These they are decidedly restrictive, even if we're not seeing a lot of restriction. But that depends in part on where the neutral rate is, something we have talked about before. I still don't get a sense from the Fed that they figured out where they think the neutral rate is. And do they need to know that before they can decide where they're going? They need to take a view, because if you don't know what's neutral, you don't know how expansionary or restrictive uh, you're being. And I find their view that the ultimate neutral rate is 2.6 to be bizarre in uh, current circumstances. Here's what we have relative to a few years ago, when they said it was 2.5. We've got fiscal policy in a much, much more expansionary place with much higher deficits, much larger role of debt. That puts pressure on credit markets. We've got a huge set of new private sector investments going on with respect to green investment in the IRA, going on with respect to resilience and uh, reducing dependence on single uh, sources. We've got a potential huge source of demand for chips and for electricity coming out of the AI revolution. And we've got a huge wealth effect as markets in for both housing and stocks have run way up for the last few years. So with all of those impulses to demand, I cannot understand why someone would form the view that the neutral rate was essentially the same as they, as they thought it was uh, four years ago. And I think the neutral rate is far more likely to have a four-handle on it right now than it is to have a two-handle uh, on it. And from that perspective, I'm not at all sure how restrictive monetary policy really is and the proof's really in the pudding. Uh, monetary policies by now had a very long time for the lags to work through. The transmission variables, stock prices, interest rates, long-term interest rates, credit spreads are flashing green and uh, loose. And the economy keeps surprising on the high side. So. Either if you look at the fundamental determinants of neutral interest rates, or you look at how, far, how fast the economy is growing, seems to me you've got to read a high neutral uh, interest rate. And I just can't understand why the Fed is talking about 2.6 as a best guess. I would be the first to recognize that this is a number that fluctuates, that we can't gauge it precisely, that economists don't have great uh, models. So I'm not saying that I'm sure that they're wrong. I'm not. But I think the challenge in policymaking is to try to make best estimates 
where you're equally likely to be wrong in both directions. 